this is the house where you was born and bred at. Yeah, better than being born outdoors. What a lovely background for your home life. I wouldn't give it to my dog to raise fleas in. So clean and nice and warm-hearted. First chance I get, I'm going to burn the damn thing down. <laughs> Lin-Manuel taught me, if I didn't know it before, you're nothing without great writing. I mean, the, that great writing is what powers the theater. There is no better show, you know, for me to come back and for us to be a vessel for, for Mr. Davis to continue to speak into a new generation, across time. He's speaking the truth. Everything about this play applies to today. The brilliance of Kenny Leon, he's masterfully crafted a play without an intermission that is a wild joy ride and just a moment for us to really truly be together in a communal vibration in the theater. And it's meaningful because it's the most ancestral thing that we do is storytelling. What better offering than Ozzie Davis's words, produced in 1961, as is, nothing has been changed or altered to this script. Oh, uh, miss, life is so good to us, sometimes. <laughs> oh, child, being colored can be a lot of fun when ain't nobody looking. <laughs> the truth. I always said I never pass for white no matter how much they offer me unless the things I love could pass too. Ain't it the beautiful truth? The show has turned out so beautifully even beyond my, my wildest hopes and the audience seems to just be eating it up. Ossie Davis, I mean he was just a brilliant writer and there's so much in the play that hits your ear and it might make you laugh and then the very next second it, it, you stop laughing and you think about it and he's able to walk that line so ingeniously. Every bit of cotton you see in this county, everything and everybody he owns. Everybody? You mean he owns people? Well, look, ain't a man, woman, or child working in this valley ain't in debt to that old bastard. Busted. Buzzard. Kenny said that, and I love this, he said, I'm, we're not doing a revival. We're doing a new play because for a lot of people this is a new play. And everything he said was right. Everything he said has come true about this piece. So I hope that's what people see and question, why is this piece still relevant all these years later? What is wrong with our nation? Why can't we just come together? As Kenny always says, bring love you know, into this. So that's what I hope people take away that we really got to figure this out, y'all. We really, it's time to change. It really is. This piece takes apart a very difficult subject, which is race, racial division. The constant attempt to bring people together and understand each other. I had not been aware how, how deeply Aussie's ear for all of this would take us. The rhythms alone of this show take us somewhere special. Through the poetry of Aussie's vision, we can see each other and talk to each other, laugh at each other, and find our way forward. Mr. Davis did that hard thing that writers do, which is lock themselves in a room alone and dig down and tell the truth, get vulnerable. There's always a time for this kind of joy coming off the stage of the music box, so that doesn't ever go out of style. Pearly Victoria's freedom is my business, and I say that old man runs this plantation on debt. The longer you work for old Cap Cosby, the more you owe the commissary. And if you don't pay up, you can't leave. I don't give a damn what Ms. Emmy Lou nor nobody else says. That's slavery. I'm sorry, Reverend Pearl. Don't apologize. Wait. Wait till I get my church. <laughs> Wait till I buy Big Bethel back. Wait till I stand once again in the pulpit of Grandpa Kincaid and call upon my people and talk to my people about old Captain, that miserable son of a. Wait! Wait, I say. And we'll see who's gonna dominate this valley, him or me.